Wonderful. Thank you so much. Well, as, our, as customary, when we uh, start our uh, time together, we've been saying to each other, what is it? Grand, Grand Rising. Rising. Right. That's our theme for the year, this idea that we, we really do rise in a grand way. We rise to the power that lives within us. We rise to the, the amazing life that we have uh, accepted and are living each day, one day at a time. I, um, I also want to wish the dads who might be watching or who might be here, happy Father's Day. Thank you. Thank you for, for all that you do. Both my uh, stepdad and my father have passed on and made their transition, but my son is the only father in our family at this point, and I, and I uh, wish you, son, a happy Father's Day as well. So, th so this theme of Grand Rising has all these sub-themes that we're working with, and, and of course, uh, last week we had Reverend Arpad, and the week before I talked about this idea of holy boldness. Holy boldness, and it really fits into this theme of grand rising, of really rising up to the, the power and the presence within ourselves. And today, I want to talk to you, you've heard a couple people allude to it in the, in the treatment and in uh, some of the things that people have said on the platform already. We're talking today about unbounded and unstoppable. Unbounded and unstoppable. Those are two words that really uh, resonate with the power of this teaching. Excuse me. <clears throat> the power of this teaching. That indeed we are always working with this immutable presence, this thing that makes the grass grow. You can't stop it from giving itself to life. You can't stop it from pouring itself into all creation. And as I look at, looked at this theme, I was reminded of our declarations of principles. It also helps that I'm teaching the Essential Ernest Holmes class. And one of the assignments in that class, besides, you know, Jesse Jennings gleaning the best and the best of what Ernest Holmes teaches in that book, we're also looking at the declarations of principle. Do you all know what I'm talking about when I say the declarations of principle? These are statements that many, many moons ago, when the Science of Mind magazine was just getting underway, it may have even been called something else at the time, uh, Ernest Holmes, the founder of this philosophy, was asked, what does this philosophy stand for? And he spouted off 15 principles. 15, and, and so we have adopted them as our declarations, declaration of principles. And the first two come to mind when I think of this idea of unbounded and unstoppable. We believe in God, the living spirit almighty, one indestructible, absolute, and self-existent cause. And the second one, this one manifests itself in and through all creation, but is not absorbed by its creation. So we have this idea of this one presence that is in and through all of life, and it's not absorbed by everything that it creates. It's a pretty cool idea, isn't it? What does that mean? What does he mean when he says that, that the one spirit isn't absorbed by its creation? Well, I think it means that the givingness of the one power is forever pouring itself into life. It is ever, you know, it is always moving into form, but it keeps moving, it keeps pressing into life through us, by us, through our thoughts, through our beliefs, through the things that we carry, and it is always moving. It doesn't stop and say, I think I'll be Alice's career forever. <laughs> you know, it doesn't stop and say, I think I'll be this relationship forever. It continues to move forward, and that's why we have that pesky thing called change, right? <laughs> And some changes are good, some changes are not so good. Oh God, am I going to tell this story? It reminds me of the story of the man, you've probably heard it a bunch of times, who, who's, uh, there was a great um, uh, uh, man who had a farm and a son, and the, the, uh, the, the farmer was, didn't have any uh, livestock, and so the, uh, 
the, the townspeople were like, what's, oh, that's terrible. You don't have any livestock on your farm. It's, you don't have any horses to work the fields or to, to get you from place to place. And the farmer simply said, I don't know if it's good or I don't know if it's bad. The um, next week, suddenly there were a bunch of wild horses that came onto his land and the sun corralled them and the townspeople ran in and they were like, oh, this is wonderful, you have horses again. I don't know if it's good and I don't know if it's bad. The following week, the son was working the horses and breaking them and he, he fell off the horse and broke his leg. And of course, you know that, come on, you say it with me. They, the townspeople came in and he said, I don't know if it's good and I don't know if it's bad. And then finally, there... Um, the, uh, the village governors came through and they began to gather up all the young men to fight a battle. Of course, the farmer's son couldn't go. So the moral of that story is that change is always happening and we don't know what the big picture is. We don't know if what's happening, the change that we're moving through, this immutable spirit that is moving in and through life and through us and through our experiences and through our culture and through our nation and our world, we don't know at the moment. It may feel good to you. At the moment, it may be really cool, you know? It might be something that you really wanted. And then change comes along <laughs> and something shifts, right? And that, and that we have this what I'll call a rebirth uh, in, in our daily lives as we move through this, this thing we call life as we live it. And so when we talk about this idea of, of a spirit, uh, a power, a presence that is pouring itself into life, it manifests the universe by means of us, by means of our experience, and it doesn't get absorbed by it. But who does get absorbed by it? Me, you, right? We get very attached to this thing called life. We get really wrapped up in what it is that we are um, creating, what it is that we want, what it is that we don't want. We get really wrapped up in it. And the tricky part is that we're working with this thing called the creative process. Now, you all know I like to talk about the creative process, especially if you take a class with me, because it is the secret sauce to this philosophy. It is the science behind the manifest universe, this power that is always creating out of itself. And the th tricky thing about the creative process is that it'll just create, and it'll create the same thing over and over again. And it'll just sit, keep saying yes to us. And we'll keep having this experience until we change our minds and decide we want to have a different experience. This creative process wants to move by means of us, wants us to have the experience that's before us. And I really love this, this uh, quote from the beginning of the Science of Mind textbook where Holmes writes, and so great is this power so complete is our freedom in it, so absolute the domain of law through it, that the misuse of this power has brought upon us the very conditions from which we suffer. We are bound because we are first free. Now, I feel like that statement needs to be unpacked a little bit. It's a very powerful idea that we are bound because we are first free. And, and I think that sometimes the low-hanging fruit when we look at that idea is, you know, something happens in your life and you think, well, what's in my consciousness that I created this, right? Well, it's true what we hold in our consciousness is, is what we experience, but it not necessarily means that if you get a diagnosis that's pretty tough to take, that somewhere along the line you were like, I think I'll create this. You know, I think I'll have my body break down. I think I'll have this disease come upon me. It's, it isn't that conscious. In fact, you know, as I, as I like to share when we're talking about this idea of creation, that we create in four ways. We, we create something. We allow something that's coming into our lives. We promote something that's coming into our lives and our experience. And sometimes we just step in it. And when we step in it, 
It's the opportunity to go back to the square one. Do we want to create, allow, or promote? Many of you know I had a pretty major health challenge about two years ago. And to this day, I have people, I had somebody yesterday, I don't think they're here today, somebody yesterday who was saying, well, what do you think you were, why do you think you created that? I don't think I created a brain aneurysm. I'm here to tell you. But I'll tell you what I did create. I created an amazing soulful experience where I was brought back to wholeness. I, cre I, I allowed it by going to see a doctor and getting some treatment. I promoted it by, by surrendering myself to the care of my surgeons and my doctors. And I created an experience where I was able to really see the, the doctors, the instruments, the, the personnel, the whole thing was God in form. I knew that the brilliance in the surgeon that did the surgery on me was, was imbued by the divine. I knew that all, all the loving care that I received was, was part of the divine in expression. And while I was going through that process, I used practitioners. And our practitioners prayed for me so that we could lift me up to a place of greater wholeness. And so when we look at this idea that we are bound because we are first free, it's because we're always at choice. We have a choice when we have a situation that comes up, when we step in things. And I don't know about you, but I'm stepping in a lot of stuff lately. <laughs> and... And when I step in something, when I step into a situation, it's easy to get all wrapped up in it, right? I'm, I'm, I'm like absorbed <laughs> by whatever it is that's happening. In, and when I can get the presence of mind and pull out my spiritual toolkit, the, the tools that we um, promote here in the Centers for Spiritual Living and in this philosophy, when I remember to do that, I can call a practitioner. I can do an affirmation. I can do a spiritual mind treatment. I can pause and I can go within and I can create a sense of calm and then I can look for inspiration. There are so many amazing tools that we offer and they all come from the one unbound, unstoppable givingness of grace that is always available to us. That is always available to us. Now Holmes has this this other quote that he talks about, um, well, he, well, first I want to mention that he, he, met, he, he says that we are, here's the sentence, that the misuse of this power has brought upon us the very conditions from which we suffer. And I really don't think we create suffering. I think we promote it. I believe that suffering happens only because we give power to the condition or the experience that we're that we're, we might be in the middle of, and that there really is no power in suffering, that we have this opportunity, there's no virtue in suffering, that we have an opportunity to move from the condition back to the cause, to, to re-engage the givingness of the creative process that wants to experience something different by means of us, that, that well, it wants to experience the same thing or something different. It's up to us to be directive. The other um, piece that I was going to bring in here from Holmes um, was actually in the Science of Mind magazine for today's reading. And so uh, our friend, Reverend Raymond Anderson, pulled this quote from uh, one of Holmes's lectures. And Holmes writes, a metaphysician is not one in my estimation who says that people are not sick or hungry or poor or weak or unhappy or that they are not born in this world and die to it. Rather, the metaphysician is one, metaphysician is one it seems to me, who includes all that is in what is. The ups, the downs, the good, the bad, whatever without ever having to admit that there is any final dualism, any final evil, or any final problem of the spirit. So Holmes is, it, it might feel like these ideas might have a little bit of um, conflict in them, but they don't. Holmes is reminding us 
that it is what it is, that the things that happen in, in, the, in the world before us are the opportunities for us to step into that place of being creative, of whether we're going to allow something or promote something or use our marvelous minds and hearts to create something different. Holmes is reminding us that we have that power. And I, um, Raymond's idea in today's reading in the Science of My magazine was that we can't change a condition until we name it. We can't, turn, we can't extract our power from an unwanted condition until we acknowledge it. And so don't be afraid to acknowledge a negative condition. It's an opportunity, friends. It's an opportunity to engage the unbound and unstoppable spirit that wants to move through you for a different experience. One that, you, that from this unlovely experience to the experience that you want to have, this is where we have our agency. And uh, the spirit is not sitting around like, she's been good lately. I'll give her what she wants. He's not so much. She's going to have to suffer some more. All of that is on us. All of that is on us. We, we are bound because we are first free. And it is that freedom that allows us to rise above conditions once we've acknowledged them, once we've recognized the power and the investment we have in them. You Back to my story about the aneurysm that I had. You know, there came a point where... Um, I wasn't taking any, uh, I couldn't take any opioids because of another condition I have. And so the pain was pretty um, available to me <laughs> for a couple of months. And there came a point where I recognized that I had, I kind of had this a relationship to the pain. Like, it was a friend. <laughs> It was really present, and every morning I woke up to greet it. And every morning I began to work with it, like, okay, I've got to t I'm going to take my Tylenol. I was using caffeine. That was really helpful um, for, for what I was working with. And when I recognized my attachment, I also recognized my, my part in the suffering. And, and something kind of amazing happened. Like, once I became conscious to that, like, it went away. Like, I, whatever was happening within me, I was able to move to a place of fully functioning again. Our minds are our servants. They are there to help guide us. And when we hit up against those negative conditions, those things that we are, are unlovely, the things that are challenging in our life, that is simply an opportunity for us to make a choice. It's simply an opportunity for us to acknowledge that whatever is before us is the condition. It is the old form of cause that has moved through us, has moved through you, has moved through me to create the condition that we're experiencing. And we have a choice. And that choice is do we want more of this or do we want to create something different? Because we're working with an unbound unstoppable, forever loving, complete, absolute, self-existent cause that is not absorbed by its creation. So, you know, if, you wanna, if I want to be in pain, I'll talk about myself here. If I want to be in pain for a little longer, sure. If I want to find a way to move into greater wholeness and a greater way of being, sure. This um, powerful presence that we're always working with just gives and gives and gives. It never stops giving, friends. But it gives what we're willing to receive. And so we too can imbue those beautiful qualities of being unbound and free and unstoppable when we're willing to surrender to the power and the presence that lives within each one of us, that lives all around us, that moves through us. It's an invitation every day. So as we, as we, as we continue to move through this grand rising, and I'll take a, a page from um, 
John's song, whether it's the old man you're not letting in, maybe it's the feeling of unworthiness that you won't let in when you get up in the morning, maybe it's the feeling of no one loves me, maybe it's the sense of not having enough. We don't have to let them in, but we do have to acknowledge they're at the door so that we can decide what we do want to let in, so we can decide what it is we do want to create and promote and allow. You are unstoppable. Sometimes you're unstoppable by yourself, but when you, are, when you align yourself with spirit, when you align yourself with your values, when you align yourself with the greater good, and you allow it to work through you, as you, and by you, you are truly unstoppable. Thank you very much. So let's have some spiritual practice here, and, and I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll do a spiritual mind treatment and affirmative prayer. As I center myself in grace, I know that it is in me and as me and by me and all around me. I trust that this grace is simply meeting me wherever I'm at, I can choose to accept it, I can choose to surrender to it, I can choose to allow it and promote it. For what I know about spirit is that it just wants to give me all that it is. That there's no place, there's no withholding, there's no desire for suffering. Spirit just wants to expand wants to create, wants to move through us. And so we decide what is our good. And we accept all that spirit has to offer. So I know for each one that we use this beautiful innate connection where we don't know where we end and spirit begins and we allow it to move through our lives in ways that are powerful and beautiful that create good not only for ourselves but for everyone in our sphere of influence. And it is this grand rising, this rising up to the power and the presence of the one mind, the one heart, the one love that allows us to be that creative force in the world for greater good. And so I know for each one within the sound of my voice that we are clear, we are awake, we are alive, we are available. And we simply give ourselves back to spirit as it has so freely given itself to us. And it is in this space that I am so grateful for this, this beautiful way that the spirit continues to represent itself over and over again. And I know for each one that we are a beautiful representation of that life in all that we do. And it's with gratitude that I simply anchor this prayer in that unstoppable and unbound power, knowing that good and greater good is ours. And together we say, and so it is. Thank you. And now 